Very few people have given me as much joy as this man on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line. Joining us here on the Rich Eisen Show um, and uh, talking to him about all things college football and all things Desmond Howard on behalf of the Townhouse Game Day Dippers, if you will. Desmond Howard on the program. How are you doing, Des? What's going on? Rich, I'm doing great. It's just an honor to oh, be please. able to, to speak to you. Always. I always look forward to these opportunities. And, um, I, you know, my favorite quote right now is, say it with your chest. <laughs> you saw it! <laughs> I said, that's my man right there, damn it. That's my guy! <laughs> You hey, saw you, you saw you saw my you, my you saw God. my work in your native Ohio, Desmond. Correct? You saw my work. You saw my. I, I saw your work, sir. And you, you tremendous as you. <laughs> <laughs> because boy, uh, yes, do the Cantonians, the wonderful people of Stark County, Ohio, whenever I uh, appear there every year with the NFL Network, is coverage of the uh, Hall of Fame uh, ceremonies and also uh, honored, bestowed the honor of hosting the jacket dinner uh, the ohs that i hear and over the last 10 years it's uh, they echo they yeah. echo and yeah. they 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 yeah. stuck with me and um i remember every last one of them <laughs> and boy did i just really give it right back i'm so glad you because i was going to ask you if you saw my handiwork in oh Canada, absolutely <laughs> watched it like a dozen times <laughs> You can watch it 42 times. That's basically what I was trying to say. Exactly. I know that's right. I should have watched it 10 more times. <laughs> 30 more times. 30 more. Yeah, I know you're right. That was, that was, that was amazing. Great, that was great. Loved it. Loved yes, the MVP of Super Bowl 31, uh, 11 fewer than the number of points Michigan put on Ohio State this year <laughs> here on the Rich Eisen Show. I could keep going on and on. It's just... <laughs> I, have, I have written, however, a very large check that I hope our Wolverines can cash in the horseshoe <laughs> later in November, Desmond. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I, well, I know you, you like Michigan. I saw they were one of your four teams to make the college football playoffs. That's right. Desmond. That's right. Absolutely. Now, you know, I think that they have a lot of firepower on offense. Um, they have two quarterbacks who are really outstanding players, and obviously that put – Jim in the position that he's in now where he's going to start one this week and start the other next week. So you got two great quarterbacks. Uh, I think the one-two punch with Blake Corum and um, and Donovan Edwards is maybe one of the best one-two punches in, the, in all the college football. Two just extraordinary running backs. I like the quality of depth in the wide receivers room. I really do. you got two tight ends who will be playing in the NFL. So I just think offensively they have a lot of firepower. My concern is, it's a legitimate concern, I know the I'm, offensive coordinator, Yep. Josh Gaddis is down in Coral Gables now with the University of Miami, and Jim, his approach to offensive coordinator position is like coordinator by committee, meaning there's not going to be just one play caller. So I'm really curious, curious to see how this experiment plays out with this offensive coordinator by committee. And uh, defensively, Obviously, you know, we we lost pretty much three first rounds. I mean, Ajabo yeah. popped his Achilles, so he wasn't drafted in the first round. But, there, you know, it's clear to everybody he had first-round talent. And McDonald went back to Baltimore to be the D.C. with the Baltimore Ravens. So, But they bring in a, uh, a new D.C. who actually coached in Baltimore with McDonald a couple of years ago. So it's the same system, same philosophy, same terminology. So there's not going to be – a uh, big difference in that department, which which is good. And I do believe that they rotated enough guys up front where guys may not be quote unquote starters. No, forget me. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's hard to replace Hutchinson and Ajabo. There's no doubt about that. But guys got you know valuable playing time, valuable valuable playing experience. So we're gonna see. The defense may take a little bit longer to come around, but they're gonna have some time because the schedule is really not that tough. Um, early on, and um, so it's going to be interesting, man. It's well, going to be interesting. Can't wait. Well, Desmond, I've, I always have been, you know, thinking over the last 10 years, dreaming that Michigan would beat Ohio State and make the Big Ten championship game in the college football playoff. I just didn't think that the follow-up would be, you know, Jim um, spending signing day with the Minnesota Vikings, and uh, I'm serious, and then and then starting the season with uh, rotating quarterbacks the first two weeks, and then changing coordinators and and my concern out of all of that though is 
uh, Hutchinson and Ajabo were such difference makers. Who are going to be the people to step up when Ohio State clearly is reloaded because that's what they do and they're better. I mean, what, 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 why would you think Michigan could beat Ohio State again and, and Ohio State um, is, is number two? That would be beyond great. I would, uh, by the way, I don't know if they'd have me back in Canton next year knowing it would come. But, but why, why, do you th- why, why do you think that is basically what I'm, I'm saying? <laughs> on paper, it shouldn't happen. Right. On paper, it, should, it shouldn't happen. That's clear. I think that people are people are looking at Ohio State and just thinking about the offense. No one's paying any attention to the defense. All only thing you hear they got this guy Jim Knowles who comes from uh, Stillwater. He's with Oklahoma State mm-hmm. for the past few seasons, and they became very good on defense eventually. But if you look at his track record when he was there. Uh, first of all, Oklahoma State a year ago, most people would tell you, had better personnel on their defense than Ohio State has right now. That's what most people would tell you if you look at their defense a year ago. So it's not like he's going to just come to Columbus, wave his magic wand, and their defense is going to be instantaneously fixed. It took him about five years to get him get that defense, the Oklahoma State Cowboys defense, to the point where they were last season under him. It's not like he came in and instantly they were like a top, you know, 10 defense or a top 15 defense. It didn't happen overnight. So I still think there's some work to do defensively with the Buckeyes. And, um, you know, you can't keep – it's, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with with, uh, with him, especially in this Notre Dame game. Because I just don't think – you know, Notre Dame is a 17-and-a-half point underdog against the Buckeyes. Wow. It's going to be really interesting to see how this game plays out because Tommy Reese, the offensive coordinator for Notre Dame, coached against Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator for Ohio State, in the Fiesta Bowl when Jim Knowles was coaching Oklahoma State. So – He's now more familiar with Jim Knowles and how he approaches his defense and how he's going to have to attack this Ohio State defense. But now, without the personnel that Jim Knowles had in Stillwater, if that makes sense. Desmond Howard here on the Rich Eisen Show, ESPN College Game Day analyst, Super Bowl MVP, Heisman Trophy winner, and we'll talk about uh, the game day dippers coming up uh, shortly here on the program. So uh, everyone knows uh, I adore you, Desmond. Uh, you know, and they they know um, you're my guy, and you know Charles Woodson's my guy, and you know the, the people know that. So when you predicted four teams to make the college football playoffs this weekend that um, were let's just say a little out of the ordinary, I got a lot of texts from people saying, "Come get your boy." That's what they say. Come get your guy right now. Uh, what's going on? with Dez has he lost it is he you know <laughs> is he is he tripping with another Green Bay Super Bowl MVP like what's going on <laughs> with your guy Desmond Howard um so I will give you the floor sir Michigan Texas A&M Baylor and Pitt with Texas yeah. A&M over our Wolverines in the national championship game what's up with that Desmond Howard Oh, my man. So it, it, de- it depends on where you want me to start. So let's, let's start with Pitt. I believe the ACC is wide open. Mm-hmm. Um, Clemson is in the – Dabo Swinney and Clemson, they're in the same uh, predicament as Michigan from the standpoint that he lost both his coordinators. So his defensive coordinator, Brent Venables, longtime D.C. at Clemson. He went to Oklahoma to become the head coach. And Tony Elliott, longtime offensive coordinator at Clemson, went uh, to take the head coaching job at UVA. And you're looking at a Clemson team that, you know, they they didn't look great last year, especially under their quarterback, D.J. Uangalale, and now he comes back. We don't know what's going to happen with them. Like, the ACC is wide open. But I do like Pat Narduzzi. I like his style of, of, of play. His team's already always tough, very physical up front in the trenches. They bring on Keaton Slovis, who used to be at USC, had mm-hmm. a great year, 2018, with them. So I think he's a very capable quarterback. The ACC is wide open, so I can see Pitt for the second year in a row winning um, the ACC championship game. Um, Texas A&M, people were just incensed with um, uh, Nick Saban's comments about Jimbo Fisher and yes. the recruiting of the Aggies. Well, he made that comment because Jimbo, I don't know if it's quietly or not, but Jimbo has been stacking top recruiting classes year after year after year. 
eventually that has to pay out some sort of big dividends for the Aggies. And I think this year may be the year. Don't forget, last year they beat Alabama. So this is a team that don't think, they don't believe, like they know they can beat Alabama. They can compete with Bama in the trenches. And now they're going to circle the wagons, man, because of what he said about, you know, their recruits and Jimbo Fisher and all that. That's just, you know, that's just gas on the fire, on the fire, so to speak. So I, I, it's going to be interesting to watch that game. Baylor, uh, I think Dave Dave Aranda does a just a great job, man. If you've ever had a chance to sit down with him, man, he's just he gets it. He's a cerebral coach. He gets his guys playing a physical brand of football. Um, I like their quarterback who's coming back. So I can see Baylor. And as a matter of fact, if you watch game day, like I think maybe two or three other guys picked Baylor to win the Big Twelve. So, you know, you got Baylor, Pitt, you know, I told you why Michigan, right. and Texas A&M. And uh, so that's why. It's, it's just so easy, though, to pencil in Alabama, to pencil in Georgia, to pencil in Clemson. You know, it's just like, will somebody have some testicular fortitude to think outside the box every once in a while? I mean, please. That's all. Yes. That's all, brother. Yes. You know? Yes. So when you said this in the game day morning, I mean, in the uh, college game day meeting, did, were they like, okay, we like it? They, of course they did. You went, you went outside the box. They must have yeah. loved that in your meeting. Absolutely, you bounced that off man. The producers. Absolutely. Come on. Okay. So, yeah. I like it. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to check your work. <laughs> we will check your work as, as the season goes along. All right. Tell me, uh, I know your time is limited, about the Townhouse Game Day Dippers campaign. What is this? Des. Yeah, what is my this? man. So check this out. So Townhouse Game Day Dippers, they're these crackers that, you know, they still got the same, um, you know, classic townhouse taste and texture. I mean, they're delicious, but they're shaped like footballs. And because, um, you know, football season's here now, nothing says football like tailgating. So they, these are the perfect crackers to okay. use to either elevate or spice up your spreads, your tailgate spreads. And it makes every tailgate feel like a touchdown. Now, the reason I, I, com- I hooked up with them is because it combines my passion for football, which I love, yes. with, um, you know, my favorite snack. This is like my go-to snack. And I have four recipes, too. Okay. Four recipes, yeah. One is um, the homemade halftime hummus. I happen to love hummus. And <laughs> another one is a first down jalapeno cheese dip. And there's three dipping techniques you can use, too. But it's just like a match made in heaven. Now, you got to go out and get them now, though, because of limited supply. You no, know, and then it just started in August. Go get them now, and then look at the back of the box for specially marked packages Mm -hmm. where you can enter a chance to win the ultimate fan cave makeover, too. All of us got fan caves, and every now and then it needs a makeover, my man. Kellogg's Family Rewards dot com for the to, for your for your uh, for your recipes as well. What do you mean? There's diff, di- different dipping styles. What are you talking? I got about? I got okay. three different I got three different dipping techniques. One okay. is a dip and twist. Yes. One is a dive play, and the third one is a daring double dip. So you got to check it out at <laughs> Kellogg's Family Rewards dot com. <laughs> no double dips, though, right? Okay. Dip. Yes, right. sir. Say it with your chest too, right? Say right. it with your chest. Love it. I, <laughs> I get T-shirts printed with that on there, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Making you I don't, I, honestly, uh, I was saying on this program, Desmond, that you know, I, I, you know my wife, you know Susie, uh, wife. right? And and I've got three beautiful children. You're a family man as well. Um, outside of my marriage and my children. I think that Canton experience with me saying it with my chest is the proudest I've ever made of myself, <laughs> I've ever felt of myself in my entire life. <laughs> and the fact that I've gave you joy and you said you watched it over and over again, oh my God, you've made my day. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely I couldn't wait to talk to you to tell you that, my man. Uh, look, take care <laughs> of yourself, it. Desmond. Thanks for the call. You be well. Take All care. Right, you too. Thank be you. Be right back at you. At Desmond Howard, I follow him. You should as well. Truly is one of my most favorite people on the planet. 